Robert Meyer Burnett, on a recent open bar stream, convinced me against all odds that Star Trek Picard Season 3 is worth a look and is, dare I say it, a great season. That remains to be seen. If you saw my recent video, Dear Sailors and Star Knots, then you know that I am going to be reviewing Picard Season 3 right here on Swords and Starships channel. I took a little mosey over to the Paramount Plus trailer. That's right. I have not, I've literally not even looked at trailers for Picard Season 3 in months because I simply don't care. Or at least I didn't care until Robert Meyer Burnett convinced me otherwise. I gotta say, I downvoted it. Partly middle finger to Paramount Plus and Kurtzman and Akiva Goldsman. And partly because, you know something, I just find it hard to believe that Mr. Burnett is correct on this score. Let's take a look at the trailer just briefly. We fight or we die. Generic line used in Mass Effect 3. This whole trailer is just peppered with generic lines. Admiral on the bridge and captain on the bridge. So we have this introduction of Picard showing up on the bridge. Uh, you get a little shot of Seven of Nine saying, Admiral on the bridge. You know, here's the problem. I've watched the previous seasons. Picard has none of the presence that he used to have. He doesn't have that command. He doesn't have he doesn't make decisions. He cowers behind the captain's chair. Granted, they may have rewritten the character here, but the performance is not there. And it's it's painful to watch because I so admire Captain Picard was my favorite character in all of Star Trek. He was literally, even though he was a fictional character, he was a role model that I looked up to. And uh Patrick Stewart was like one of my favorite actors as a result. I mean, he still is, but let's just face it. He doesn't have it anymore. So I just don't understand. I just, I find it hard to believe he's going to be an admiral. He's going to be a, do a doddering old man is what he's going to be. And then we have Seven of Nine. How could they ever rehabilitate the damage they've done to that character? They killed off her surrogate son, Echeb, in the most vile way possible. They turned her into this vengeful, murderous uh, mercenary out for revenge. It's just what they did with her character is so awful. And honestly, Jerry Ryan's performance of the character is cold. And I know she's a Borg. She's supposed to be cold, but not that kind of cold. I'm serious about this. She became a kind of warm character in the same way that Spock or Data became warm characters by the end of Star, Star Trek Voyager. When I say she's cold, what I mean is there's no life in the performance. There's no, she isn't interesting. Seven of Nine was one of the most interesting characters. And for whatever reason, she seems more like a corporate bureaucrat than like an interesting Borg drone rescue. And I think part of it too is she's so disconnected from any of the characters that she knew in Voyager. There's no sense of her friendship with Janeway, her romance with Chakotay, her almost aunt-niece relationship she had with Naomi Wildman. Obviously, I'm not saying these characters need to be on screen, but my point is that like, there's no connection to Seven of Nine and anything about her previous... They don't even reference, hardly at all, uh, her adventures on the Voyager, other than just once in a while in passing, they just barely mention it. And that's extremely disappointing to me because I wanted to see that thread of Voyager continued, and now I'm sort of grateful that they didn't do much with it because, uh, you know, fuck this show. Boring? Well, we won't be blowing things up. Taking or engaging in fire, crash landing. They come into this briefing room and this admiral, I, I mean, I guess he's an admiral. I don't know what the hell he is, who cares? Expectedly or unexpectedly. Those were the days. Right, he's sitting there telling he he's doing all these cutesy J.J. Abrams-style Star Trek 2009 kind of lines. Well, you know, it's not going to be like the old days. There's not going to be any explosions. They show an explosion. Not going to be any crashing ships. They show a crashing ship. Oh, my God. Here we go again. It's just... 
look, I get that the trailer may not be a fair representation of how the actual show progresses, but but it's it's just more J.J. Abrams action track is what this smacks of to me. Starfleet could be the target. Now, this is an interesting shot. That is beautiful. That looks a lot like the Sovereign class. I know this is probably the Titan here. And it looks great. I mean, it looks like a cool, probably not the most original ship design, but not bad. Okay, I took a close look at this shot. And yes, the shot you see here in the trailer, there's actually some differences between the different ships. And they actually have some cool looking Federation style design. So that is definitely in the plus column. You know, the, one of the biggest problems with the new Trek is they do copy paste. They just copy paste a thousand of the same Starfleet ship and it's boring, it's bland, and it has no sense of scale of the actual, you know, military strength of the Federation. And by the way, did you notice that in the J.J. Abrams absolute disaster that was Rise of Skywalker, they did the copy paste thing with all the with all the destroyers. They basically had all the destroyers from Exegol. They just copy pasted, uh, give me a thousand. No, give me 10,000 of them. Yeah, and you know what? Put a Death Star level laser on every single one of them. It's lazy, it's boring, and it has no connection to what actual fans of Star Trek or Star Wars are actually looking for. So this is a step in the right direction. We actually have some interesting ship designs. I'm all consuming darkness. And it is getting stronger. All consuming darkness. It is getting stronger. Blah, blah, blah. That, you know, every line in this trailer is generic. There's even a line where Picard says, We fight or we die. Uh, Mass Effect already used that line in Mass Effect 3. I'm not saying everything has to be 100% original, but I'm telling you, there's not one line in this trailer that's like moving or inspiring or. Ooh, that's cool. Getting stronger. John Luke, trust no one. We get Beverly Crusher saying, John Luke, trust no one. And you know what? Again, I'm getting the dark feelings. Uh, there's a growing evil. This is the this is suggesting to me the same kind of dystopian dark crap that we get from Kurtzman Trek. Jean Picard. I gotta say, this villain looks kind of cool. I have absolutely zero faith she'll be an interesting villain because every time a villain looks cool in Kurtzman Trek, they turn out to be just more garbage. But I have traveled to the far reaches of space. Okay, so we get treated to a lot of lofty dialogue by Commander Ry well, I assume now Captain Riker, or Admiral Riker, I forget. This is the end, my friend. Final voyage begins. Thank God. Put this thing out of its misery. I mean, I love seeing Geordi. I love seeing Crusher. I love seeing Riker. Jonathan Frakes, man. Worf looks badass as hell. Look, look, this is more lens flares, more stupid martial arts action. I mean, I know it's the trailer. You have to show it, but... By the way, the music in this trailer is not that great. I also, I hate the modern warp effects. They took the star parallax and they turned it into just bright light. They basically turned it into what it looks like in Star Wars, which to me is just a very boring aesthetic. I need you, all of you. We're with you, always. Engage. We do get a great shot of Picard saying engage. Gee. It only took three damn seasons for him to take command of a bridge and say engage. Was that so hard? Well, are you enjoying this? You know, we close on this great little note with between Picard and Riker where he's like, are you enjoying this? And there's kind of this little banter between them. You know, I like stuff like that. You know, I know that I sound jaded on this video. I know that, you know, I... My goal on this channel is not to be negative all the time. I really don't want to be. Um, I've just, I've been so betrayed as a Star Trek fan. You know, I was optimistic when I watched the first season of Picard, and there were moments where I thought it was really great. I was optimistic when I started Star Trek Discovery. I was hopeful. 
there were things in that trailer that looked fun. You get these member berries that they've held out before and they've used it to lure you in and then they absolutely destroy what you love with just dark, dystopian, shallow, crappy storytelling. Um, and they throw in a bunch of woke garbage uh, just to top it all off. So I just, I don't know, Robert. I don't know. I'm still seeing the lens flares. I'm still seeing the wacky action scenes. I'm hearing a lot of bland, boring, trite dialogue. And I just can't see how Patrick Stewart can pull it off. He, I, I bet you that scene where he's sitting in the chair and he says, engage. I bet that's the one time in all 10 hours of this that he actually does something that sounds commanding. And probably it's a moment where like someone else was get, like Riker was going to be saying engage, but he's like, Admiral, for old time's sake, would you like to give the order? And it's like a ceremonial thing. I hope I'm wrong. I hope this is a great season. You know, look, there's a part of me that is tempted to say I wish it were crap and that the whole thing went down in flames because I, I so despise Paramount Plus and Kurtzman and Akiva Goldsman and just and even Patrick Stewart for what they have absolutely done to destroy the legacy of Star Trek and the Next Generation. But you know what? To give into that feeling would be to give into the very same negativity and hatefulness that is so self-destructive in uh, in the in the mob that we're seeing in entertainment these days. So. Look, if it's a great show, I will give you my honest truth. And you know what? I will celebrate it for that. It won't take away the damage that's been done to Star Trek. It certainly won't revive the Star Trek franchise. I think that's, it's too little too late for that. But hey, one more fun, rousing adventure with the characters I came to love in my youth. Why the heck not? Let's see how this goes. Let's do some reviews of Star Trek Picard. Maybe we'll all be pleasantly surprised. Let me know in the comments what you think about Star Trek, especially Star Trek Picard, and uh, whether you think I'm right about this. Am I being too doom and gloom? Am I being too negative? Maybe. Or am I being just naive to even think there's hope? You let me know, dear sailors and star knots. And if you like this video, please do like and subscribe. I thank you for watching. All I will say is engage. Make sure to check out my novel series, Blood and Oak. It's available now on Amazon. It follows the sword and sails adventures of midshipman John Sullivan. When his sister is kidnapped and sold into slavery by the Barbary pirates, this daring young Navy officer embarks on a suicidal quest for rescue and revenge. It's available now on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and a fantastic audiobook narrated by Travis Baldry. I'm not just giving commentary and commenting on the problems in entertainment, I'm doing my best to be part of the solution, and I would be truly honored to earn your readership and your support. Until then, I say hail to you, hail to the fellowship, and hail to the Iron Age of Entertainment.